This is no ordinary loaf of bread. It traveled here by plane all the way from Paris, a city where the fine art of baking is handed down from one generation to another lovingly and sometimes poignantly, as we're about to see from David Turacamo, our man in Paris. In a little bakery on a side street in Paris, I once saw a demonstration of how to make a simple sugar cookie. The baker was a man who could elevate even cookie dough to an art. But look at that. It's a piece. I'm sorry, but it's beautiful. His name, Lionel so. Poilin. Lionel Poilin was probably the most famous baker in Paris, maybe even in the world. Because I always think that if you're if you're famous in baking or pastry in France, then you're famous in the whole world. Because that's really where the great stuff is. Now this is Dory Greenspan, and she's considered one of the foremost authorities on baking. Her numerous articles and 10 wow. books include Baking with Julia. That's right, that Julia child. And it was about seven years ago that she asked me to shoot Monsieur Poilin making the cookies. But you know, I'm tempted to, to say that when you look at, at Lionel Poilin making those cookies, what you're seeing is magic. I mean, it almost looks like magic. And even I, and I know nothing about baking, e even I was impressed by it's finished. the economy of his movements, the way he used his hand, one hand. So Working now. with one hand is actually a baker's trick so that your other hand is clean in case you have to do something with it. The shop was opened in 1932 by Lionel's father, Pierre. Today, they draw people from all over France and even the world. Their specialty is a sourdough bread baked in the 300-year-old oven downstairs. And those cookies? Well, they're called punichons. That's uh, punishments in French. Now, you can buy a box, although it's part of the charm and the generosity of their spirit that there's always a basket of them on the counter. Just help yourself. And those cookies were really iconic. People would grab a cookie, they'd pay for their bread, they'd put their bread under their arm, they'd grab a cookie. You always saw people just munching away at these cookies. So when this phase is finished, really, now, this isn't now, about a recipe. You start to mix all together. And I hate those the, things where they go, mm, there's nothing like the smell of fresh baked cookies. But rather, how in an butter. age of industrialization, tradition has been kept alive by these simple gestures. You know, the secret is simplicity most of the time. We, we must admit that it, but to make it simple, not very easy. Barely four months after we shot this in the summer of 2002, Lionel Poilin was killed in a helicopter crash. To me, baking was pretty much an evidence. Like, I knew I was going to take over one day. The company had just happened sooner than what I anticipated. Apollonia Poilin was but just 18 when her father died. I have to tell you, I'm really excited to see this because I haven't seen my father live in a while. She's now 26. Okay, can I, can I trust you? Anytime. Okay. You mix, it's, it's amusing, you know. Kids love to mix that with their hands. Well, to, to, you know, to, feel, no, to feel the, the butter between the fingers, you know. I can't be mixing here. Really? Yeah, I agree with my father. I think there's something very essential and exciting about touching dough, working the dough. Now, you know, running a little bakery might not be a challenge for a Harvard graduate. Production starts here. Yeah, Apollonia went to Harvard. But her father believed... For me, uh, hands are more intelligent than a mixer. Okay, but it's so he decided to train others using the same techniques. And so just outside Paris, he built the Manu factory. That's factory because of the scale. Manu because... Because we use the human hand as the main tool. An average of 50 bakers turn out more than 5,000 loaves every day. Just to keep the ovens fired, requires 150 tons of recycled wood every month. Because today, family's bread is available not only throughout France, but 11 other countries. Our bread keeps for about five days. This, this oven can contain 100 loaves. Even though, I mean, do you love the scale? It's like something out of Ben-Hur. The reason why we use it is because we want our bakers to be involved in the process, to feel things. If it's just about however many kilos, then, you know, the baker is just the appendage of, of a machine. 
which unfortunately many have become because across France and Europe, more and more bread rolls off assembly lines like these. Those machines make the work of the remaining bakers extremely more simple, but it also extremely less tasteful. This is very important. You must not need the dough. And Poilin's stature as a baker, well, there it is, the way he almost caresses the dough. I looked at him work on this dough. Gently like that. And I thought, what I'm seeing is 40 years of experience in this three minutes that it takes to make the dough. The irony is, Lionel never wanted to be a baker. He was forced into the business when he was 14 years old. And he tells the story of going down on his first day and just crying. This was just not at all what he wanted to do with his life. He had in mind, you know, this, uh, what was until recently, very much the French stereotype that you had to be, as they say, grand, fort et bête, strong, tall and stupid. But when you prepare that with, with your body, with your hands, you give something of yourself. And that's what he discovered, and that's when he started okay. uh, getting a glimpse into the beauty of his job. Mm -hmm. He realized how much he loved it. Oh, and why are the cookies called punishments? It's miraculous. Punishment. Well, it's because you have to wait for them to cool off. Yes, in fact, the punishment is the fact that you cannot heat it burning, you know? <laughs> <laughs>